So the next part is about exactly this, layer-wise pre-training. So the idea is quite nice, uh, quite nice, yes, and it's also quite simple. That was what I wanted to say. Uh, we apply the, the denoising autoencoder in, in several steps. So here first we can see our denoising autoencoder from before. Um, we train it and that means now we get an F1 and a, and a G1 uh, mapping, uh, and an encoder F and a decoder G. In the next step we forget about G and take our uh, representation, our uh, hidden representation H1 and add new noise to that and then we train another uh, denoising autoencoder to reconstruct the uncorrupted version of the latent vari uh, variables H1. We can do this again uh, and then do that several times and now we have learned to uh, hidden representations of, um, of the original data and we hope that this has this nice property that they actually map data from the original data manifold uh, or is part of mapping of a mapping H, uh, F and G is a complete mapping but F, the F part will also take part of this uh, noise removal mapping data toward, back towards the, the manifold the data is lying on and then in the end we can take the second hidden representation latent representation we get and then we can fine-tune the whole chain and make uh, use our labeled uh, data to do this so this is the idea behind uh, uh, this supervised uh, fine-tuning and unsupervised pre-training so Symmetry voice learning has made a lot of progress in the recent years and this curve you should be a little bit careful to read it. Now we are talking about unsupervised MNIST so we have all in all 60,000 uh, input points but here we vary the number of label points we have for these 60,000. So we can here you can see we start out with uh, 100 label points and you can see the different methods here. See, for example, the ladder network gets a little bit more than 1% error, and this is pretty amazing because before the uh, revival of deep learning, uh, this number would have been considered really good for a neural network where we have used all the labeled data, all the 60,000 labeled data. So you can see this shows a little bit about the progress that has been uh, within uh, deep learning. And uh, what I will talk about next. Uh, uh, the variation autoencoder, you'll we'll see that we can actually get even better than this result. We can get below 1% error on MNIST with only 100 labeled data. So that means only one, only 10 labels for each class, but still using all uh, 60,000 input points, but only 100 of them have actually labels. So this is part three on deep uh, generative models for on and semi-supervised learning. So think about this again, we want to build a model with latent variables where we can make it dream up new data points once it has been trained. Um, so let's be a little bit, uh, let's change the notation a little bit and, uh, and explain this by this graphical model. So now we, instead of having H, using H for our uh, latent variable, then we use C and we still use X for the, for the um, observations. And this plaquette, this box we put outside indicates that we have N uh, uh, unlabeled data points in this case. So uh, the arrow going down is the uh, encoder, sorry, it's the decoder, it's the way to take our latent representation and generate X again and the line going upwards, dashed line, is the is the encoder, that's the mapping from, from the uh, input data to the latent representation and in the probabilistic uh, framework then both of these mappings are, are 
conditional probability distribution. So then we have phi and theta. Those are the parameters we use in the uh, in the um, in the decoder and the encoder. So now I want to explain uh, the probabilistic approach to latent variable models. So as I said in the previous slide, we want to make all uh, parts of the model probabilistic. So in our so-called generative model, we have the joint distribution of our x's, our observations, and our latent variables. And we decompose that in terms of a simple distribution, a simple prior distribution on our latent manifold PFC, which we simply take to be a normal distribution uh, where we have no covariance between the different components of the latent variables. And all the action happens in the mapping from the latent space to the observed space. That mapping will represent with a stochastic uh, neural network model. So we can say that we give it an, 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 a latent variable as an input and then it produces a probabilistic model, a density for the for the data. This will all be more clear uh, a little bit later, but just just bear with me on this for a moment. So why is it this uh, model, first of all, why is this attractive? It is attractive because we can now learn very uh, complicated mappings from, from a latent manifold to an observed data space. So you can imagine, for example, you have a latent manifold which has two dimensions and varying C will produce all the MNIST digits that you see by actually going around in this manifold. That was actually how we generated this movie I showed before. But the model is quite attractive uh, uh, to um, attractive from the kind of uh, expressiveness point of view, but it's very hard to learn this model. And learning consists of essentially three steps. We have an inference steps, and that is look at, at that is finding the posterior distribution of C given an X. So you can see that corresponds to reversing uh, the the conditionals using Bayes theorem. That is difficult. It's also difficult to calculate the likelihood for this model. P of x comma c is what is called the complete likelihood, but since we have not observed c, then in order to get the actual likelihood, then we have to integrate out c. So that's what we have in this expression here. And this in integral is a complicated multidimensional integral. If, for example, we have chosen C to be 50 dimensional, then it's integral over 50 dimensions for each X, for each example. Learning is also complicated because it uses the likelihood for each, from each example. So if, if we want to find the maximum likelihood estimate, then we actually have to maximize this uh, likelihood where we have the log probability for each example. So all these are difficult computations and the big big breakthrough recently for these types of models is that it had been realized that we can use variational inference uh, and deep learning models to define both an encoder uh, and a decoder. And the variational approach will uh, naturally lead to the use of an, uh, uh, an encoder. You can see so far we only have the decoder, the mapping from C to X, but solving this uh, variational uh, inference uh, problem gives us also naturally leads to a formulation where we need also to have an encoder. This was pioneered work in parallel between uh, Kingman and Welling uh, and then also uh, a group of researchers from Google DeepMind.